All right, now that we've seen the problems that we're gonna have if we have so many objects in our game, let's look at a few solutions. So first off, we could use constant variables in order to decrease the amount of memory we're gonna need. The second option we have are static variables. They do something quite similar, but are a little bit more flexible. And the third option we have is the flyweight design pattern. And this is what we're gonna inspect a little closer right now. Okay, so let's have a little look about how we can implement these three solutions to our simple StarCraft II clone. So I have declared a simple circling class here, and these are the variables we're gonna use. This is if we optimize nothing, yeah? So it works, everything's fine. But the problem we're gonna have is if there are thousands of these circlings, each of those variables is also in the memory 1000 times. And that's not a good thing. That causes severe performance issues. So we need to optimize this. And the first thing we can do to optimize it is to use constant variables. So the current HP variable stays pretty much the same because this variable needs to be saved in each instance of the class. So because it is not shared, we cannot optimize this variable away. It needs to be stored in each instance of the class. There's no optimizing here, but we already mentioned for the other variables, the max HP, the movement speed and the unit name, I invented the last one, so it's a little bit more interesting. Um, those three variables can be optimized quite heavily. So we need way less RAM. And we can do this by using the const keyword, which is marked here. The const keyword, um, what this does is, instead of saving it for each instance, it says this is not a variable or not a default variable but instead it's constant. So it's a fixed value. It's not stored in each instance. Instead, it's just a fixed value and the compiler optimizes everything so that this value only exists once within our uh, RAM. So what are the pros and the cons of using constant variables? Well, the good thing is it's extremely performant, yeah? So you won't get it any more performant than this. But this performance comes at a price because the problem is it's not editable by the game designer. Well, it is, but not very easily. I'll show you right away how hard this is to do for the game designer. So if I just swap into Unity and I open this script, um, Let's have a look, where is it? Const, yeah. I declared all of these things constant. Don't mind this line, we'll talk about it later. Um, and the problem is, if I create an empty game object with this circling on it, even if I set it to oops, debug mode, I cannot edit constant variables. You see, current HP isn't constant. This thing shows up, I can edit it even. But uh, the constant variables, they can't be changed. So if you're a game designer, every time you want to change a value, you need to open the script and change it in here. That's not good. You really don't want to do this to your game designer. In a perfect world, the game designer usually wouldn't have to open any script at all most of the things he should be able to do just here in the inspector. And there's a good reason for that because you're the programmer. And when the game designer messes around with your code, usually that doesn't lead to anything good. The next huge downside of constant variables is that you cannot use references to game objects or mono behaviors in constant variables. And that's a huge problem because we need to use those in most cases. 
So we're very restricted if we use constant variables. So that's probably not the best solution there is to our problem. Let's look at the next one. So the next solution we came up with are static variables. And it starts again with current HP being just a normal variable because it's stored in every instance, so nothing to do here. But the other three variables are static variables. And I hope you have a basic understanding what static is. You really should, but basically just to refresh your mind, what the static keyword does for variables is that it, instead of saving the variable for each instance of the class, the variable is only saved once and shared for all instances of the class. So you could say it's basically saved in the class, but don't hold me accountable. It's not a perfect definition, but that's how, how it's easy to, to think about this, I think, okay? So the variable is saved in the class instead of the instance. And that's basically what we want, right? Yeah, it is but static variables also have their downsides. So let's look at the pros and the cons of static variables. They're also very fast. They're almost as fast as constant variables. However, compared to constant variables, they've got the huge advantage that they can store references to objects uh, like game objects and mono behaviors, which is very important in Unity. So, that's quite nice, but they still have one major problem. And this problem is they're not very easily editable by the game designer, just like Constance, he needs to open the script in order to change them. That's nothing we want to force our game designers to do. And the second disadvantage is that they are quite prone to errors when loading new scenes, etc. Because if you load a new scene, they are not reset automatically. You, If you want to reset them, you need to do this on your own. And it's just a source of errors if you're, if you're not careful in your programming, okay? So I ran some tests about performance and how those different solutions impact the RAM usage of our program. And that's what I came up with. Left scale here, you have the used RAM in kilobytes and we can see I tested it two times. Once where you only have two variables which are shared between all instances. And I instantiated the 10,000 instances of those circlings. And the second test was with 102 integer variables. So if we analyze the test a little bit, we can see with two shared variables, the RAM usage is almost identical for all four things. However, there's a slight difference. Normal circs do have the most RAM usage, just slightly over one megabyte. And the constant circ has the least, static circ almost as few, and flyweight is somewhere in the middle. But as soon as you scale up the shared variables, you can immediately see that the normal circ scales very poorly. So we have six megabytes RAM usage just from this simple class. And that's really not what you want. If you have many bigger arrays or something, uh, that's gonna impact the performance quite heavily. Also, we can see constant and static circ, they don't scale at all almost. And if you look at the flyweight, it uses slightly more than the static circ, a few kilobytes, but nothing really that we should be concerned about. So the gains outweigh the uh, problems with the flyweight design pattern by far. And the reason that this is just a little bit more than static and constant circ is that we need to have a reference to another uh, game object. And those are the 64 bit per instance that you additionally need. And that's the difference between having so low uh, RAM usage and needing to use a little bit more. But it's not so much, so you 
you don't have to consider that a problem. Hey, I hope you learned something in this video. And if you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Also, this video is part of my Unity Design Pattern course over at Udemy. In this course, I dive far deeper into the topic and teach you what the best practices are, how to implement them, and how to apply these concepts in an Endless Runner project. So if that sounds interesting, make sure to follow the link in the description below. The first 100 subscribers get a 50% discount on the course. And also it takes a huge amount of work to pump out these videos. So I'd really appreciate your help. Anyways, see you in the next video. Thank you.